talk about chillers. We've got the immersion chiller, but what I'm going to focus on today is the plate chiller. I want to do this to help explain the efficiencies that you get with the plate chiller, as well as cleaning and handling, because there's a lot of confusion and concern about the chiller plugging up. And in all my years using them, I've never had a single problem like that. I'll talk about the length and how the length really is the attribute that gives you the most efficiency. On this particular setup, you'll note I have cam locks for the water in and out. That's the cooling water. And tri clamps on the beer line input and output so that I can maximize ease of operation as well as sanitation. Also, you note I have a ball valve on the output so I can control the flow rate. And you'll see me do some of that in the video as well. It's a hot day here in Tacoma. Even with that, you'll see the efficiency the plate chiller offers during the brewing session. So let's go ahead and get started. See what we got. The one in the front I've had for a number of years and used in my system. This is the typical kind of home brewer plate chiller that you'll find. It's about 12 inches long, 30 plates deep, and as you can see, I've added in the plumbing required to hook it up to my system. Now, this is a good chiller. It does a nice job, but I could not do single pass cooling. In other words, straight from the boil kettle, through the chiller, and into the fermenter. I'd have to recycle a little bit, which is no big deal and common practice, but I really wanted to get to the point where I could go through a single pass and efficiently chill the wort. That gave the notion of buying this bigger one back here. Now, as you can see, it's quite a bit longer. It's about 23 inches long. And it's also 40 plates. Now, the plate count does a lot to help with the pressure going through it. It incrementally helps the cooling, but the extra length is what really achieves the higher efficiencies. So I'm going to go ahead and take the plumbing off of this, configure the new chiller. I'll have to weld some brackets onto my brew stand, but we'll put it to the test and see if I can finally get to the point where I can cool from boiling temperatures down to fermentation temperatures in a single pass through the chiller. So here we are running. You can see the flow rate coming out. We're at 69 degrees, 71 now. That's from the kettle. This is at 192. And this is our flow rate of the cooling water. So great results. Very quickly, single pass. See the temperatures inching up. By the way, it's the middle of summer now, so it's pretty warm outside. I can control that by adjusting the flow rate down here to a slightly lower rate. I'm out of oxygen today, so I'm just doing a free form flow here, letting a natural aeration occur. You see our temperatures down to 68, with the flow rate a little bit higher than I had set earlier on the cooling water. We're still at the same temperature coming out of the brew kettle. And by the way, this has taken me about five minutes so far. You see we're about a little over halfway done. So we're getting the results that we want to quickly, efficiently, and with a lower use of water. While we're chilling, I want to show the cone that I created with a simple whirlpool. Whirlpool was done with just a spoon, and there's just a couple ounces of hops in here, but also a whole lot of break, because I did a pilsner today. And as you know, with a pilsner, you get all kinds of break that floats around, and we definitely wanted to get that to settle out. So whirlpool with a spoon for about two minutes, let it stand for almost 20 minutes, and that's what we're left with. Once it gets a little lower, we'll see the side pickup tube and see how it's performing. Okay, underneath the thermometer probe there, you can start to see the pickup tube. And what we're going to see happen is this 
cone is going to want to collapse a bit. So I'm going to stand close. I'll go ahead and really restrict the flow and uh, try to limit the amount of collapse and then ultimately the true pickup that takes place afterwards. So let's just go real slow here and we'll see what happens. Back to the conical. Things are running fine. Temperature down to 66 degrees. There's the chiller. Back to the kettle. And then you can see as the amount of water used, that uh, kettle there is about seven gallons. Oop, that keg is five gallons. And then my two buckets are a couple, uh, three gallons each. So here's the final action. You can see the pickup tubes pulling a little bit of the material, but that whirlpool does so much to really restrict how much is taken. I'm going to run it gently here for a bit longer. Uh, a side point too, interestingly enough, most any that's picked up now will probably wind up in the chiller here. And a lot of people are concerned about the chiller getting blocked up and things like that. I've never had that problem. I'll give it a good back flush and uh, clean it all out, but things really do run great. I hope you can see this in the kettle. Right down to the bottom, really picked up most all the liquid and left all of that other material behind. So it's getting close now. We're starting to draw in quite a bit. So I'll probably go ahead and shut this off, start my cleanup process. So we're all done and let's survey what we have. The little pan here, that is the liquid that was in the chiller when I was finished. I simply unplug the hose and it all flows out freely. And you can see there's a good bit of particulate in there that was at the very end of the transfer process. Inside the kettle, again picked up most of the liquid and left that nice cone of break and hop behind. As far as water use, the little uh, tubs there are three gallons each, so six gallons there. Let's call it seven gallons in the kettle. So that's 13 plus the five in the keg. 18 gallons of water used. All cooled in about, oh, seven minutes, I'll say. Now to clean out the chiller itself is really quite simple. We go ahead and connect a hose to the output. We're gonna back flush through and let the water exit what was the input when I was doing the transfer. It's a very simple process. I do this. I'll go ahead later, add some hot water with PBW in it, let it soak for a bit, and rinse it out one more time. But I'll just show you how it works. Now, when you first start doing this, you'll notice that there's a lot of you'll notice that there's a lot of hop material that comes out very green in color. I've already flushed this a little bit so it's a lot better right now but you get the idea. So again that's all there is to it. Successful day out at the brewery. I'm looking forward to seeing how it comes out. Good luck to y'all and we'll talk to you later.